Hey everybody, welcome to the Galaxy Admin Training session on using Ansible. Um, this session assumes that you've already went through the slides on the training material page, um, and we're going to follow with the hands-on. The start of this session reiterates what most of you should already know from going through the slides and we'll only run very quickly through it um, if you need to read more on it feel free to pause the video obviously at any point um, and read on the, do uh, the, the documents and materials that are linked from here so ansible is a tool that you can use to run commands on remote computers um, the very interesting part of it is that you don't have to install ansible on the remote computers in order to run um, the Ansible against those, um, which allows you for uh, transparent administration of, of, of those machines. It allows you for uh, moving files around, configuring things, starting processes, killing processes, uh, basically whatever you're capable of doing uh, with uh, command line utilities. Um, you can also do that with um, through an Ansible um, path. There are some other softwares that do similar things to Ansible, uh, like Ansible, like Puppet or Chef. Uh, but in Galaxy World, most of the things are written for configuration management uh, is using Ansible. So that's a very good reason for also using Ansible for your own Galaxy since you're going to be able to reuse a whole bunch of materials and code already written by uh, the members of the community. Uh, let's quickly run through uh, these basic terms of what we uh, encountered when working with Ansible. Um, the, basic of every, the basis of everything is the, something called inventory file, which contains um, either URLs or, or IPs or other identifiers of the actual machines you want to um, you want to affect with your Ansible um, script. The other part that you might be interested in is the called Ansible module, which you can uh, think of as a piece of a Python code, which uh, is reusable and configurable. Uh, for a certain usual and very atomic purpose. So something like uh, something like a command or, or a move file or a copy file. Uh, those would be modules in this context. Then there is uh, a bigger unit of work called task, which uh, usually consists of uh, a specific module or more and uh, contains variables and configuration of how to invoke, like in the example of copying, like where is this, where is the source of this file that we're going to copy and where it should be copied to, sort of like a destination. An even bigger unit in this hierarchy is something called a role, which uh, contains not just the tasks with the configured modules inside, but also the actual files that should be copied, like the contents of them. Uh, these could also be templated. And, and all of this together is called a role. And this is a very useful unit to share. So Ansible has its own uh, website where you can share these roles. Uh, and we have many of these roles ready to roll for, uh, for the Galaxy administration purposes. So anybody can grab these roles and use them uh, in their own configuration for their own uh, Galaxy deployment. When you actually want to execute the roles against a specified uh, set of servers or just one, um, you make something called a playbook, which is uh, uh, a file written in a in the YAML format, and it lists um, 
all the high level um, information for the Ansible to be able to execute all the tasks you specified. So it lists uh, where, the, where the host file is, uh, where what roles it should be using, uh, what configuration or what variable, variables uh, are uh, available, and things like that. Uh, a special part of Ansible is something called Vault, which you can use for storing and sharing encrypted um, information, which in the end will allow you to, if you imagine uh, having the Ansible code and all these tasks, roles, and playbooks in your uh, Git repository version. Uh, if you include a vault, this will allow you to share um, even production level um, configured playbook publicly because only the uh, only the three chosen people will be uh, will have the passwords to access the vault, which for everybody else will be encrypted and unreadable. We've talked about the inventory file. Uh, this is roughly how it looks. Um, it specifies groups of servers. In here, we can see two of them. One is called web servers, one is called databases, but they can also be uh, called migrate servers and the green servers or any other number of these groups. And they're usually specified either by IP or uh, by, uh, by URL. And you can specify some other, um, some other things. Um, for example, what is the name of the user that Ansible should be uh, connecting as um, when, when it's executing the tasks it's given. The roles uh, can sometimes look a little bit scary because there can be many folders. What you're looking at here is, is a folder structure. Um, of a, so, so the leftmost folder is the root folder, and then there are folders in there called defaults, files, handlers, meta tasks, templates, and wars. And each of these folders uh, contain some sort of configuration for enhanceable pieces that we're going to execute. Uh, I think this is taken from an actual real role uh, from the Galaxy project that's used to configure and, man and manage um, the CDMFS. And as with, I would say, all of the Galaxy project and civil roles, uh, this one is also public and shared, and everybody's encouraged to to use it, contribute, and just uh, you know benefit from. So this is how an actual real role hierarchy stru and structure would look like. And here's some description of what the what the folders are meant for. Uh, the most important folder of every role you're ever going to see is called the tasks. And that's the one that contains, that, that glues everything together. Um, so in the other folders, there are uh, default variables, the files to copy or to use, the templates to, to fill with uh, various um, runtime data or even like configuration data. Um, but the tasks is where it all goes, comes together and where you can see where things are coming from when, they, when they're connected. So if you're exploring a, lo a role for the first time, start with the tasks folder. Here's an example of a task file. So this one is in a folder called tasks uh, and it's called main.yaml probably because it's either the only one or the most important one. And here you can see a, a, a two tasks, or it's uh, two, two module calls. Um, here is a task for downloading a CMFS preload, it's a bit thing. And the module is called get underscore URL. And all these, uh, variables are fairly straightforward. It receives a URL where the things are stored. It gives Ansible the destination where this should be downloaded to um, and who should own the file, both owners and group, and what should be the read mode. 
uh, or the execute mode on the on the file once downloaded. And then there is an extra uh, there's an extra step um, that checks that this task is only executed only when this variable um, is true. So when 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 it's uh, when it's uh, required. And this here in the bottom is another um, another task. It's going to call the service module. And what it's supposed to do is that uh, it makes sure that the auto file system is enabled, which is here, and also that it's running, not just enabled, but it's actually running at that point. So if it's not running, it will store it. If it is running, it will just uh, leave it be. And that's uh, another feature or sort of uh, architectural design of um, Ansible that it's trying to be to some extent um, idempotent of number of executions. So no, for example, these two tasks, no matter how many times you execute the playbook that is executing these tasks, um, the system should end up in the very same state. So, so this task, it's not going to turn off and on the AutoFS. When it's running, it will leave it on. When it's not running, um, it will start it. When the service is not enabled, it will enable it. But when it's enabled, it will leave it enabled. Um, so and that's something that you can all often take advantage of when working with Ansible, uh, because this, this, this can be very, uh, very powerful. It can also be sometimes a bit scary uh, because you can break this functionality. So if you rely on it too heavily, and then your playbook is, for example, doing something that just cannot be uh, redone at the same state, like if it's uh, a committing, committing code into a repository, then every commit will end up with different hash. So Ansible cannot redo it uh, the exact same way. So uh, you can take advantage of it, but uh, you should be aware of its uh, limitations. There are some stylistic choices that uh, needs to be made when working with Ansible. Um, namely, there are two main styles how to write the YAML files for uh, for Ansible. One is these uh, that you use these indented variable names and uh, and module names, or you can define all of these in line. Uh, this is a matter of preference. Most of Galaxy project um, and civil roles I've seen are using the first style, uh, which is what we're going to follow. But sometimes you can see these, so don't get um, don't get scared. These are the same; they're just written in slightly different syntax. Now we get to the playbooks, which again is the sort of uh, topmost file that you interact with when working with Ansible. Uh, and uh, in this, you define what's going to happen from the from sort of like uh, executive standpoint. Like take these servers, set variables for all the, the roles and tasks we're going to run to these values, and then execute these roles. And this sort of defines how this is going to operate uh, once you once you run it. There are some notes on philosophies on how to design your playbooks, whether they should uh, take care of, uh, of, uh, of an atomic operation on the remote server, or whether they should uh, take care of, of one set of things that's related to, for example, one service. These are up to you. Ansible does not dictate uh, what, should, uh, what should the approach be. But generally, um, try to choose one and stick to it. Uh, as far as I know, Galaxy is usually trying to stick to a single playbook that does everything for a given service. So as we touched a couple of times already, um, Ansible playbooks and tasks and roles um, can use variables. And these variables can be defined in um, in many places. 
In fact, these, there are probably like 30 of these places where these variables can be, and there's an order of precedence. So sometimes when you when you when you run into trouble uh, with um, you know some task is not behaving as it should, uh, it's copying to to a wrong file, it's copying to a wrong destination, or something like that. Uh, make sure to make sure you understand what variables are actually going to um, are actually being used for the playbook execution. Now this is it for the first section. Uh, I think the walls will leave for the for the very end. So get ready for your first playbook and your first role. Your first playbook and your first Ansible role. Um, so I've changed the setup a little bit. Now you should see the training material on the left of the screen and on the right you'll see uh, my terminal. Uh, so I'm connected to one of the Galaxy Admin Training Machines. Uh, each of you should have um, your own machine to connect to. Uh, nobody should be sharing the machine. Since we're going to work in the same uh, directories, um, you don't want to uh, clash with someone else uh, modifying the same files. So I assume all of you have that. If you don't, please pause this video, go obtain your know, URL and the username and password and connect to your machines. Once you're ready, let's go. Uh, one thing to uh, be aware of is that uh, Ansible is a tool and a very powerful one. And if you use it in a wrong way, you can break things. Um, so Ansible can delete things. Ansible can uh, move things, uh, overwrite things. Um, generally, it can destroy stuff. So until you are fairly confident that you know what you're doing, I recommend to work in sort of a sandbox settings, just like for the Galaxy Admin Training, you have a virtual machine that um, if you just completely burn it down, it's, it's fine. You can just get a new one. Um, by the way, just if you need a new one, let me know in the chat or on the Slack, uh, and I'll, I'll get you one. Uh, nevertheless, just be aware of this tool's power and stay safe. There are some options that you can um, you can use when running Ansible, uh, the dash dash diff and dash dash check. And these are going to sort of uh, test what's going to happen when you actually run. So it's sort of a fake run of the playbook. Uh, it has limited insights of what's actually going to happen because you cannot predict completely what's going to happen on the specific machine when you run these commands. So, but Ansible is trying to give you uh, its best guess at uh, what is going to change. So you can inspect, for example, diffs, uh, like differences between files uh, that you are trying to modify. So let's hop into it. Let's create the basic role. Um, so I'm currently logged in as a Ubuntu user, and I'm in my home directory, I believe. So I'm going to uh, run through these tasks of uh, creating a role. Um, the first step we already have because we're all in the virtual machines. Uh, the second step, install Ansible, uh, is already solved for us too because all these machines have Ansible installed. So let's start with the bullet point number three. Create a directory named intro and change it into it. So to create a directory, that's mkdir, and we'll call an intro, and I will enter it. There we go. Um, now we want to create the inventory file. The generally the general name for it is host, and for creating and manipulating and changing files, um, feel free to use any editor you would like. I'm going to use nano. So let's create file called host. And then we will create a group 
add called my host, which is specified like this. And now we specify where the Ansible, like a destination for the Ansible to execute. And because we want to um, execute locally, we want to run Ansible from the same machine that we are affecting. We're going to specify the host as localhost. Uh, the Ansible connection uh, parameter we will set to local. And the Ansible user uh, parameter will set to Ubuntu, I believe, since that's our user on this, uh, on this machine. That's what everybody should be logged in at. Now we save the file. And here, if you want, you can uh, you can check whether uh, the decisions you made in choosing these variables is correct. Also, if you fall behind at any point or if you just feel lazy typing, there is a convenient copy button in most of these uh, gists that are throughout the training. Um, so if you just copy that, you'll get the whole contents of such. And if you just paste it in your editor in the terminal. Further, we're going to create a, a directory for the tasks that we're going to write in Ansible. And so again, we're creating directories. This time it's uh, multiple directories at once. So we're going to use the dash P. So we want to create a roles directory. We want to create my roles subdirectory of that and we want to create the tasks. So all these directories should be now created. And now we are supposed to create the actual uh, file with tasks written in YAML. So I'm going to enter the path to this file and name it main.yaml, since it's probably going to be the only one that we're going to use. So let's call it main. Now we're writing YAML, and we want to do just one task. We want to copy a file to a remote host. Um, so the remote host here is defined by the host name. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to copy a file locally, since we are the remote host in this context. But nevertheless, it should do something on our behalf. And it doesn't matter what the destination is, at least it doesn't matter to the Ansible. So I'll name the task. This is completely arbitrary. You can name it whatever. Uh, now we select what module we're going to use. We want to use the module called copy. And we'll give it some uh, parameters. So we we'll give the parameter called sort. And we say you should copy file called test.txt. And we'll give it the parameter destination or test, which says in this file that you found called test.txt, copy it to a temporary folder under slash temp, slash dmp. Um, now, now we say this, save this. And that's our first task. Um, so we're going, we're using a, a module called copy. Um, this, of course, has its own documentation. And it has a listing of things that you can use, a listing of modes that you can use when copying things. And generally, um, whatever you're trying to do in Ansible, uh, you usually want to use an already made module or task or role or playbook of somebody else, uh, unless, like until you feel uh, confident enough to, uh, to write your own and better ones. And now we need to create the file itself. Uh, so we selected, a, we wrote a task that tells Ansible, hey, take this file and copy it there. But we don't have the test.txt file yet. So let's create that. And for this purpose, we'll create another folder where we can drop these files. And we'll put it under the same role because it's, uh, it's connected to, to the role we're running. So I create this folder roles, my roles files, and I'm going to create the file next. And we'll call it test.txt because that's how we named it in the task. And inside we can write 
whatever we want. Um, right here, Galaxy, and save that file. So we have the task, we have the actual file that should be copied, and now we need a playbook to glue this together and tell Galaxy um, what it should do with what files at what hosts. Um, so we're going to create a file called playbook in the root folder, playbook.yaml. And now we write YAML again, and we'll write, um, so this playbook will run on these hosts. This is the name that I've chosen in my uh, host file. This is the name of the group, my hosts. And I'll select which roles it will run on. Uh, and I want to run it on only one role. That's called my role, which corresponds to the um, to the folder structure that I've created. Now I'll save this playbook. And so we created a bunch of files and some folder structure, and we can run the playbook. But before that, let's make sure that uh, we put things in the in the correct places, since this is the first time we're putting it there. Um, so we can use uh, the tree command, which, are, which everybody should have available their path um, to see how the folder structure underneath the current intro folder looks like. So we have a file called hosts, a file called playbook YAML, and then a directory called roles. And in the roles directory, there's a role called my roles. And this should be my role, right? Yeah. Made a typo. So this is the set of roles. And these my roles should be the ones, uh, should be the one that I've created. So let's just move this whole folder. Oh, it's in roles. Right, so this role should be my role. And we can validate that. Checking the playbook. And this is the role's name that we're going we're invoking. So now we can run it. So for running playbook, we use ansible-playbook command, which is part of the ansible installation. So if you have the ansible command, you also have the ansible playbook command. Um, we give it dash i hosts parameter, which says inventory, and then the name of the file that has the inventory in it. For us, that's the host file. It's also the default. And then we'll give it the path to the playbook itself, which for us is just uh, in the root folder. So we run a cancel playbook command on hosts inventory. And the playbook we want to execute is called playbook.yaml. So, and this is the output of Ansible. Lots of asterisks, but also lots of information about every step uh, that's happening. So the most important step for us at the moment is this uh, my role task execution, which is supposed to copy the file to the remote host. And here in the output, we can see that Ansible says changed on localhost. Uh, changed means that Ansible did something on the remote uh, server with regard to this task. Uh, and generally, if there is no errors, it should be successfully making whatever you asked it to. So let's check. So what we told Ansible to do is to take the file and copy it to the temporary directory. So let's see if there is some file in temporary directory that is called test.txt. There is, and it contains the hello galaxy. So this is not where we've created the file. This is where we copied the file using Ansible. So Ansible did that on our behalf.
there are some ideas in the tutorial that you can uh, that you can use for uh, for getting a, a, a sort of a more experience with running basic uh, playbooks. But I'll leave that to uh, your discretion. There is another interesting part of this playbook execution that we've just ran through um, that we did not define. So this step we did, this is the my role that we created. But this task uh, called gathering facts is not our making, but it succeeded, which I guess is good, but it's also would be good to know what it's happened, what happened there. So this is a default Ansible task that Ansible will always run on your behalf in the beginning of, uh, of every playbook. And what it does, it, it runs the setup module. And the setup module uh, loads all the informations and facts and uh, variables of the host. And then the playbook itself and all the tasks, tasks and roles that are called from within it um, are able to use all these facts. So things like uh, the IP of the machine they're running on or its configuration, its environment variables, um, its operation system, its uh, runtime values and things like that. And you can explore what is being returned to Ansible from the remote host, if you run the setup module uh, by itself on the host. So we're going to invoke the Ansible command on the same inventory. So we're executing it on our own machine that's listed in the host file. And we're running the module called setup on the group of uh, my hosts, which again is what we did. And we're piping into the, to the less, um, page browser. And what we got is a whole bunch of probably JSON of sorts that uh, specify that, that lists all the information that Ansible was able to get from our system. And therefore all this information are available to whatever tasks and roles you want to execute in the playbook. which could be uh, very useful for, for many purposes. Uh, one of the purposes it could be used for is that uh, different operating systems uh, could have a different uh, responses to certain commands. So you want to use the command that's uh, specific to the operating system that you're calling. This should not be the case in general, like if you're copying, um, you should always just use the copy module and, and Ansible will, uh, properly use it on all the destinations, on all the hosts. But there are going to be cases where, where, where these operating system differences will play, um, will play a role. So there's a question for us to solve what variables stores the OS name. So for that, we can, we can explore the output of this uh, Ansible call and we can grab for distribution So uh, seems as the distribution is Ubuntu, which we knew since our username is Ubuntu, but at least now we know the version. The version should be 2004. Another question here is where are all the places you can find your machine's IP? IPv4. Uh, let's check for IPv4. Yep, that sounds like it. So Ansible default IPv4 and Ansible all IPv4 addresses looks like the, the variables that we would use if we want to use the, the IPs of our hosts in our tasks or roles. The next interesting application is our, the, the templated files. The templated files or templates you would use when you want to distribute a file across systems, but that file is slightly different depending on where you're copying it. Um, so let's run through an example so to, to clarify what exactly this does. So we're going to create a bunch of directories again. Uh, 
first we're creating the directory for templates. And we're also going to create directory for defaults. Since templates are going to flow with variables, and it's useful to have um, to have defaults for those values. And now we're going to create uh, a variable file for my role, which lives under roles my role defaults, and we call it main.yaml. And now we're writing YAML again. And we're going to specify one variable called server name. And the value of such will be sharks. So now we have a server name defined here in the main.yaml as a default value. And now we're going to create a template itself. So for templating, for, for templating, um, Ansible uses uh, a template engine called Jinja, um, which is not entirely unreasonable. Um, and generally, you can find that where the template is being used, where the template, where, where the templating is being used, that's where the double curly braces occur. So in the examples below, you can see that this, all these curly braces uh, mean that the template thing is going to insert the value of the, of this, of this variable uh, before the playbooks or the roles execution. So back to our example, uh, we created the, the variable file and now we're going to create a template file. So we're going to create this uh, this file called, called test.ini.j2. J2 is the Jinja. Oh, I see, you cannot see that. Let me clear the console. That's why I move up. And now I will create the test.ini.j2 file. and we can uh, insert the contents. So I'm going to create an example template, which sets the server name to whatever server name is defined at the time of execution. And it's also sets the listen variable or environment variable to whatever whatever is available as the default IPv4 address uh, which will be provided by the by the ansible setup module that we explored a couple of minutes ago so now I'm saving this uh, test INI which is templated. And now we're going to add a task to our role. Because we want to use this template, fill it with variables and then write it somewhere. So I'm going to open my role, which has tasks defined in this main.yaml file. So roles, my role, tasks, main.yaml. This is the step number six here. And here is my first task that's already here. That was the copying of file to remote host where we were copying to the test.txt file. And we'll create another task here, which we will name uh, template the configuration file. Maybe. And we're going to use the module called template. And it behaves fairly similarly to the module copy. It's going to have uh, a source, which for us is the test.ini.j2. That's the file we created as the source of the template. And it's going to have a destination because templating is used for, uh, for writing files to a remote destination filled with the variables that are important to us. 
So we'll write this file in the temporary directory again under test.ini file. So we're dropping the J2 um, suffix since after this module's run, after this template's run, it will no longer be a template because it will be filled with the variables that are available to, to the playbook execution. So I save that. And now we should run the playbook again. So we run the Ansible playbook. We're running, we're operating on the same inventory called hosts. And we're running playbook.yaml. So we can see that there is one extra task for my role. So the first task was to copy the file to remote host, and that has not changed because the file is present at the destination and Ansible will check that for us. So it's not going to redo that. But there is a new task that we created to template the configuration file and that one reports to be changed. So Ansible is claiming that it uh, did what we asked for. So let's check if there is a test.ini in the temporary directory. And there is, and it has been templated. Since we can see that the server name is sharks, that's not the value in the template, that's the value in the variable file. And then it also templated the IP of our machine, uh, which it got from the setup module of Ansible. So this has worked. So we templated a file with the defaults that we defined for a given role. Uh, now, when you're actually using roles that were written by someone else, you're instead of changing the defaults of that role, which is uh, not for you to modify, you usually create your own variable folder or, or variable files that take precedence of uh, whatever was supplied with the role. So we're going to create, create a folder called group wars, which is where generally these uh, uh, user or user supplied uh, variables are going to be stored. And we're going to create a variable file there called my hosts.yaml. We're calling it like that because that's the group, you know, inventory file that we're operating on. And this signifies that these variables are specific to those uh, machines defined within that group. And they're not applicable for others. And now we're writing YAML again, and we will overwrite the default for the server name. So instead of cats, sharks, dogs, we'll have dragon, zombies. And now we're actually overwriting the defaults. So maybe this could be a nice time to check what Ansible thinks is going to happen. So instead of running playbook like this, the Ansible playbook dash I hosts playbook YAML, I'm going to add the, the check flag and the diff flag. So this is now doing a test run. So the first tasks aren't interesting anymore because we're not changing those, but this is the one we changed. We changed the templating of the configuration file. And now instead of just writing, hey, this has changed and Ansible done that, it's actually showing us a diff of what Ansible thinks is going to happen. So it's saying that there is uh, to be, there's going to be a change in the server name and from sharks, it will be changed to dragon zombies. Sounds good. I think this is what we wanted when we were changing the variables. So I'm going to delete the dry run options and just execute the playbook and now Ansible is just saying, yes, that's what I did. Um, go see for yourself, which I'm going to do. So let me check what the, what the values are within the, that's the INI. So the server name has been changed to dragon zombies. So it's now ignoring the default and it's consuming the variable that we specified in the, in the group wars folder.
So that's what we did. We used a whole bunch of uh, variable templating and you can use these almost anywhere in Ansible. They can be used in tasks, they can be used in roles, they can often be used in playbooks. Um, there are also ways how to how to get variables at the execution time of the playbook, so not before the run or at the beginning of the run, but you can actually sort of uh, uh, trickle variables from early tasks of the playbook um, into the late tasks of, of the same playbook. Well, good job, everybody. Now we've created uh, our own small role that uses multiple modules and even uses templating and runs against uh, our defined inventory. And if we wanted to share this role or if we wanted to download and use roles of others, and there is something called Ansible Galaxy, which is um, a service provided by Ansible. So it has no relations to Galaxy Project. It's provided by Ansible and it's sort of app store for Ansible roles. Um, so whenever you create something that you think could be useful to share, uh, you can upload it there. It's sort of uh, just a service like any other uh, with a web interface where you can search for roles that others shared. What I'm going to search for here is uh, the example role that we're going to install um, in our and run within our own playbook. And it's called memcached. Uh, its author is uh, Jeff Gearling, which is uh, this sort of uh, Ansible Galaxy powerhouse that has created dozens, maybe hundreds of high value, high quality Ansible roles that uh, people all around the world are uh, happy to use. So what we're going to do in the first step is that we're going to use the Ansible Galaxy command, which is part of the Ansible installation, um, to install the role from Jeff Geerling um, called memcached, and we'll install it into the folder called roles. So I'll just copy the command from the tutorial and execute. Uh, in the Ansible Galaxy, we're going to download all the files and put them into the roles folder. If I check into my roles folder, I can see that the memcached is now stored here. So the next step we need to do is to actually put into our playbook um, the, the link, link to this role that we want it being um, installed and managed by Ansible. So we'll modify our playbook.yaml and we'll add a gearling um, role under my roles, under my role um, in the roles section of this playbook. Then we save. And now when we execute the playbook, the memcached uh, framework for caching uh, should be installed together with uh, the execution of the rest of our playbook. So again, we'll operate on our host file and we'll give the Ansible playbook command the playbook.yaml path. However, we've received an error, uh, which in this case um, is expected. So what this is going to tell is that there were permissions denied in the step install memcached. Um, so the problem here is that our playbook and our Ansible playbook command operates as um, the user Ubuntu. And the user Ubuntu on this machine does not have uh, permissions to install stuff. So what we need to do is we need to use sudo or sort of uh, become super user for this particular task within the Ansible execution. So Ansible has means how to do that. And what we need to do is um, we need to change our playbook so in the playbook.yaml 
under these host entries, my hosts, we need to add become true, which uh, which tells Ansible to um, to become a super user when executing this playbook. So I'll save that, and we will rerun the playbook again. So I'm rerunning the same command uh, with the same playbook, which I only enhanced with the become true entry. So it did not immediately fail, which is a good sign. Um, so hopefully it will get installed soon. And there are some other ways how you can um, how you can specify whether something should be run as a super user, whether some command should be run with sudo, uh, whether Ansible should ask for passwords when uh, when it's when it's needed and such. Generally, uh, what you should do when you're operating uh, on the remote system, um, you should use the lowest permissions that are needed for a, for a given task. But this will often depend on uh, what the policy of, um, of the machine you're working on is. So our role installed correctly. Um, or the role installed, the role executed correctly. So we have a memcache now installed on the machine, including the default configuration, since we didn't change anything um, in the default config. So we're running memcached on uh, whatever configuration was provided by default uh, by the Jeff Geerling, the, the author of the, of the role. Um, in the end of this session, there is a write-up about how to choose a role from, from, from Galaxy Ansible from, or from Ansible Galaxy. Um, and there are no easy ways how to, um, how to answer that. Um, you need to look into whether other people are using it, uh, whether it has a good documentation, whether um, from whatever you're able to parse, it looks reasonable, and then maybe test it before you actually deploy it on, on, on something that you care about. However, there are some uh, there are some namespaces that you can use for filtering. So, for example, things that are written by Jeff Geerling um, are most of the time of very high quality. Um, in, in the same manner, we recommend using the Galaxy project and use Galaxy uh, underscore EU um, and Sybil roles, which are uh, oftentimes the, the the best roles to use for. Uh, maintaining uh, a Galaxy instance. Another feature that's very useful in Ansible is something called Ansible Fault, which allows you to encrypt um, secrets related to usually the, the hosts that you're using, the inventory you're deploying to, um, and then ship it together with the, with the code for configuration management with the roles and tasks and, and playbooks. Um, so this allows you to keep everything together, but also to keep it safe since the vault is, uh, is encrypted. And it allows for um, nice sharing of um, production level playbooks. So for example, use galaxy.eu and use galaxy.org are sharing all of their playbooks um, that maintain the infrastructure and the Galaxy instances and, and, and uh, surrounding services uh, together with the secrets, but all the secrets are obviously um, encrypted using the Ansible Vault. So in order to use Ansible Vault, um, we're going to run through a couple of um, hands-on items to just get a little bit of experience about how to approach this. So we're going to create a folder called secret group wars. And then we're going to generate a, a random password using the open SSL command that's uh, 24 characters long and we'll store the password in some file called vault password txt. Um, we'll check that something happened there. There's a password 24 characters long that we're going to use to encrypt the vault. Now we're going to create um, the 
vault itself using the password file as the password for its creation. So the Ansible vault command is part of the Ansible installation, and this is going to create a vault under secret group Mars uh, all.yaml file. So now we are inside the all.yaml, and once we save this, it's going to be encrypted with the password that we supplied to the Ansible vault command. So we're going to specify an API key uh, variable here, uh, and we'll call it um, uh, super secret uh, super key to everything. And we'll save that. And now we close the editor. And what happened now is that the Ansible vault command created this file on our behalf and it encrypted it using this password. So if we check the file we've just created without any attempts of decrypting it, we'll just see rubbish. Um, so this we can take and commit wherever we want, even in public repositories, uh, as long as we keep the vault password safe. So that should obviously never go into the Git repository and it should be shared only with the people that um, need to know. So in order to use this new encrypted variable that we defined, uh, we're going to modify our template that we've created in previous step. So it was the test.ini.j2 and we're going to make it I'm not sure what happened here. I see. So we're going to modify the template file. There we go. And we're going to set the API key. Or maybe we can just, yeah, we we'll set the API key to. The variable that we specified in the vault that's encrypted there. And we save the template. And now we need to modify the playbook to specify that this playbook is going to use the vault encrypted variable file which is under secret group wars. We created that path and the file name is all.yaml. And that should be it. I'll save the playbook. And now Ansible still doesn't know how to decrypt this. So we can decrypt using command, but, but when we run it as a playbook, uh, we need to specify in the playbook how to decrypt stuff. And for that, Ansible uses um, a configuration file in the root. It's called ansible.cfg and it's uh, it's an INI file to which we're going to paste contents of this, which says that uh, for the default, uh, if you want to decrypt stuff, use the vault password.txt. Write it out. And now we're going to run the playbook. As before, so we're supplying the inventory of hosts and our playbook name stays the same. Copy keys undefined. I think I've made a mistake with with one of the names there. So it's probably somewhere in the template. Right, so I call this API underscore key. And I don't think we changed anything here. It's fine. And we should also check. Oh, yeah, right. 
Let's try again. Hmm. I think it's still undefined. Well, let's try to edit the vault since maybe I made a typo there. So I'm changing the command from create to edit since this file already exists. Yep, and the API key here is without the underscore. So that was the cause of the name issues. So now if we rerun the playbook, this should, yep, this should pass. So all the roles from before are green unchanged. The only thing that changed was the templation or the templating of the configuration file. And so now we can we can check whether the templating looks like we think it does. And so what happened here is that Ansible on our behalf, uh, using the password we provided in the ansible.cfg, uh, filled this template with our super secret, super key to everything. Um, so as long as you keep the password safe, you can, the master passwords of sorts, uh, you can share encrypted stuff together with your roles and playbooks and tasks um, and make this sort of uh, unified tool to manage your, um, your machines and your deployments.